if you've ever taught, you do all this work with your kids and you send them away for the summer and they come back with this blank stare on their faces trying to figure out what was it that you talked about last year, multiplying, dividing, what is that? And they, they basically lose a lot of the skills that they acquired during the year over the summer. And for more affluent young people, the summer is more of an enriching experience. The parents travel, they go to other countries, they enroll them in fancy summer camps and workshops. For less affluent kids, a lot of time is spent, you know, watching TV, you know, sitting outside. If it's too hot, they can't. You can go outside. The average achievement gains for lower income kids during the school year is practically identical to the average achievement gain of upper income kids. So these kids aren't falling behind during the school year. They're keeping pace. If you look at how those uh, achievement scores trend over time for different kinds of kids, you see a characteristic profile. Say at the end of first grade, there'll be an achievement gap. And then if you look at, make the same comparison at the end of second grade, the gap will be a little bigger. At the end of third grade, it'll be bigger still. Achievement gap just gets bigger and bigger over time as disadvantaged children fall farther and farther behind. Basically what that is is that disadvantaged children uh, come closer to keeping up during the school year and fall behind during the summer months. The conventional notions of summer camp are that there's trees, there's lakes, there's campfire, sitting around telling stories, sharing experiences, and getting to know new people. These summer camps have a challenge to create a summer camp experience, to transform a classroom into a community gathering place a place where they can sit around the campfire, share stories, share happenings, and get to know each other. The goal isn't to turn camp into another school or another educational setting. It's to utilize the strengths of youth development to work with kids in a way that they're learning at the same time that they're having fun. Clearly you need a, a strong core academic program because that's where, that's where the problem mm -hmm. lies. Uh, Reading is the foundation for everything that follows, and it seems to me if you, if you got to focus on one thing, that would be it. And he wasn't back by lunch, and he wasn't back by dinner, and he wasn't back by the snack after dinner. It's one of the best things you can do for a child, is to read to them, and then have them either act it out, tell a buddy, whatever you need to do to make sure that they've understood it, and also give them opportunity to raise questions to one another. Because if we can talk really well about books, then we can talk really well about anything. That kid, that was saying, was talking, talking my rhythm. I think that was Michael Jordan because he goes, and this is my life, the life I live. Like saying, I chose my path already. I know what I want. Literature is a really good vehicle, it's a really good tool to ex explore the same kinds of things we're trying to get kids to, to explore on their teams. So it's just another way to, to bring that home to the kids. So for camp counselors, when they're working with the kids, one, you want the camp counselor to know what they think they're teaching the kids, what the goals are, what the outcomes are going to be. And when the kid knows what they're supposed to be learning and what they're going to do with that information. A lot of times what readers have to do is they kind of have to go back and revisit certain parts of the book so that they can kind of help themselves think a little bit more. So my the development of vocabulary doesn't come from just lists, it comes from exposure. People reading to them, having conversations, looking at the world. Um, it isn't only reading that the kids have to do. And it has to do with their understanding of what they read and their application of it. The whole point of a Venn diagram is you want to figure out what is similar about two things and what is different. You guys have to go around the room and find who's got a picture that's just like this, but that's from a different country. Teaching kids how to organize information, how to find out what's the most important, how to categorize it and link it, is really, really critical. You know, if you have a piece of information, it comes in, it's going to go right out. If it has nothing to do with their life, you know, oh, they made this kite. Great, I've never flown a kite before. We learn about the invention, and then we make the invention, and then we read a story about the invention, and it just reinforces their understanding of it and gives them a context to put the information in. We, we definitely try to have them look beyond the world that they know to get them out of the neighborhood with field trips. Uh, we're always trying to use a multi multidisciplinary um, approach. We're uh, listening to Chinese opera. We're also going to look at a Vietnam CD-ROM today. They're going to create an airline. So, and then they're going to travel to different countries and everybody has a job. They also are learning you know, how an airport runs and different groups are going to come and visit their classroom and take imaginary trips on their airline. 
Okay. They come up with the projects themselves and they all put it out there. This is what we plan to do. This is what we've accomplished. So there's, there's a sense of I can do it. I can complete something. I can research it from beginning to end. Uh, submersible is used for like um, scientific work and a submarine is for defense. And this is the propeller. Go this one goes like a jellyfish. You know how the jellyfish sucks in water and then throws it out to push itself? It's the way I've always thought about teaching and learning for myself to embody what you learn. You'll keep it with you longer, you'll learn to apply it, and then what they will get over the summer is that they won't take a step or two back in terms of their skills levels uh, and their ability to work in team. And instead they'll take a step or two forward. I like to, to think of the whole program as, as a learning environment and that we use the classroom as a learning environment but we also use the field, we also use our field trips. The kids see that as, as one big hole and they don't differentiate between what they have to do in different places, that it's all, it's all part of who they are. The teachers have the time to listen to what the kids have to say and that's not something that kids get to have that often. There's a lot more openness and time and freedom to be as creative as the kids can possibly think of being. Those are the kinds of experiences that they should have for the summer, as much fun as possible. Yes, we know that they you know, need to keep up their academics, but also to have an enriching experience. Go to a museum you never went to before, you know, make a new friend that you never had before. What we try to do is to try and close the gap and keep them from falling backwards. We try and give them a heads up so that they even go back to school a little bit ahead of where they left.
The conventional notions of summer camp are that there's trees, there's lakes, there's forests, there's woods, there's campfire, sitting around telling stories, sharing experiences, and getting to know new people.